Yon! Oh. Finally, man! This is 14. it! Our first yes, guest! Episode 14, very special episode. Episode 13 yung pinaka-stressful natin episode. <laughs> Pinag-usapan yung lahat ng nangyari sa Sofitel, no? At mga hindi natin napag-usapan sa Sofitel. But today, we have a very special guest. And hopefully, this will be the beginning of a long series of discussions with leading thinkers, personalities. Hopefully, we'll have the candidates, among others, also later on as the election season heats up. No, uh, uh, But for today, we have a very special friend, old colleague, uh, somehow a rival back in the days in the debate world. Um, oh, no bitterness whatsoever, but that's an interesting story we have. But here we are. Okay. Good to have you. I know, man. I know uh, it's been like 15 years or something. Uh, <laughs> We're here today with uh, Dr. Lisando Claudio or Professor Lelo Claudio, no, from University of California, Berkeley. He used to be in Atene. We were colleagues there. And he went to La Salle shortly after I left La Salle. So <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. Maybe I'll yeah, go to Stanford later on. Kami. But Lelo is uh, uh, unquestionably one of the most prolific uh, Filipino thinkers out there and he writes a lot he writes very well and he's author of among others uh, you know the award-winning books you know about liberalism in the Philippines on Rizal on liberalism in the Philippines among others I've, I've learned a lot from reading his work so our approach today will be a little bit different from usual because we in Mark medyo panditry ang ginagawa namin Leloy can do everything because Leloy did also his panditry with Rappler so we're going to discuss Maria Ressa today uh, but before that, we, our, we want our audience, because our audience is very diverse. Marami mga solid isko, thanks to Mark, right? Marami <laughs> mga solid Lenny, thanks to all of us. And may mga solid DDS and BBM na nag, uh, nagsa-stalker oh, sa atin. Welcome here. I know. You're welcome and please continue to be nice to us on, on different <laughs> platforms. No? So today we have uh, Leloy. No? And, and, and Leloy... Uh, I'm sure he's going to give us a very interesting overview from historian standpoints uh, uh, on Philippine politics at saka mga latest na nangyari dito. But first of all, let's go to you, Leloy. Leloy, um, so tell us a little bit about your background because that informs a lot of your politics and a lot of controversies around you, especially yeah, well, in recent years. I don't know where I start. Um, my, I was born um, in 1984, so my parents were of the martial law generation. They went to law school. Uh, they went to law, medical school together. Uh, they fell in love in medical school, and then as medical students, instead of joining a frat, they joined the Communist Party of the Philippines. And then in the 90s, uh, they left the Communist Party during the years of the splitting of the Communist Party. And uh, they were kind of sympathetic for a while and then really drifted away from the party. So I grew up amidst that. And so... I kind of mirrored that trajectory a little bit when I was young. I was also quite mm -hmm. sympathetic to the Communist Party, and then I drifted apart. And then nowadays, I, I'm, I'm very critical of the movement, and I've discovered mm -hmm. kind of liberalism and social democracy as my way forward. As you mentioned a while ago, I'm also a college debater, so I'm very mm -hmm. argumentative, uh, somewhat yes. pugnacious at times. Um, pero yung naituro sa akin ng college debating is kahit na academic ako, you always have to reach out to yung average, what we used to call this abstraction sa debating, Richard, ba? yung average reasonable right. person. Kailangan, kahit right. sinisikap mong maging mahusay, maging matalino, pero sinisikap mo rin kausapin yung average reasonable person. So that's right. always been my audience, that, that abstraction, regardless of whether na nagsusulat ako, nagpa-podcast ako, or nasa rappler ako. Right. Right. Thank you very much for that overview. And of course, uh, yes, I mean, we had we had our own days in debate. I think uh, the first time we went against each other, I, we beat you. That was so shocking. I mean, it's like, no, 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 no. you beat us. Yeah. No, 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 no bitterness. No bitterness at all. I just no, want to make sure that you're not the only historian here. I have things also no. in mind. So, so we had this Ateneo UP rivalry back in the days. But later on, we ended up as colleagues in Pulse yeah. Department of Ateneo. No? So, so yan ang landas. Yeah. Lahat ng mga kaibigan ko ngayon, yun yung nag naging napaka-important for me in debating. Lahat ng mga, ang dami ko mga naging lifelong friends from that debating process. A lot of them now who are also doing, you know, what, what we do, like academics right. who also have public uh, contributions. So uh, Nicole Corato, for example, was also of part of the debating, so debating Society of UP. So uh, it was a network. Um, and it's a great network that we still tap into. It's very nice. 
Right. Hopefully, it will be a kind of a nucleus of a young Turks in the Philippines or not so young Turks. Uh-huh. That was that was the hope. So it's uh-huh. really uh, good. Uh, Lalo, the other thing I remember from you, from your works among others, tapos na itong college rivalries and all, is your work in Hacienda Luisita. So you're a historian by training, right? Your, your PhD, I think, was in Melbourne University yeah. where, where you took your PhD in history. So your training is history and then you did some research in Hacienda Luisita. Malagyan, Mark, kasi pag Pag liberalismo, Hacienda oh. Luisita is the troll's favorite topic. Oh. Oh. So let's get Lelo's point of view on that. Ano mga, what was the research all about? What is your take on the Hacienda Luisita issue? Alam mo, parang ginagago ko yung sarili ko, sinasabi ko, dilawan ako. Pero I tend to engage in research topics na gusto na mga pro Marcos. Actually, I look at the injustice in Hacienda Luisita. <laughs> and actually, right. nowadays, I'm looking at the crisis of 1980 and showing why the debt crisis was not just a function of debt mismanagement. Kasi yung sinasabi ng mga dilawan, di ba? debt mismanagement, I'm showing that it was actually a global crisis. So, gusto mm-hmm. pro Marcos at eh, yung Hacienda Luisita. <laughs> so, by the, so you're, you're referring to the economic collapse of the Philippines in early 1980s. Uh, sinasabi uh, mo, hindi kasalanan lang ni, 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 ano yan, ni Ferdinand, Ferdi the father, but actually this was part of a broader debt crisis in the uh, third world. Mexico, actually, Latin America. Uh, and, uh, ang, ang, may ang culprit talaga dyan. Uh, uh, ang, <laughs> ang culprit talaga dyan, US Fed. Yun yung main culprit talaga. Right. On the Fed. Reagan. Uh, let's just say Reagan's fault, yeah, right? So yeah, from yeah. From or, Lake or Carter people, to Reagan. Yeah. Or what people would call high neoliberalism in academic right. terms, right? So, uh, the balik tayo sa Shanda Luis Diaz, sorry. Pero, yes. yung Shanda... Don't tayo kasi the, our audience is very YouTube-ish, right? Ah, so, balik na tayo sa Shanda Luis YouTube University to, hindi Berkeley mm-hmm. University. So, yung Shanda Luis Diaz, parang ano, yes. nung PhD, I was doing research on yung mythology ng EDSA Revolution. And sabi ko, napaka-great. And, and actually, I share yung sentiment ng maraming mga DDS. Napaka-grating nung idea na mm. sama lahat nung, nung panahon ni Marcos. Tapos biglang na restore yung demokrasya ng EDSA revolution parang ito yung ano eh parang parang Star Wars eh no parang after the after right. the third movie you know the Ewoks and uh, the Jedi blow up the Death right. Star and everything is good so i wanted to challenge that and one place to challenge that was yung Hacienda Luisita right Right. And nung pumunta ako sa Shenda Luisita, nakipag-usap ako sa mga magsasaka doon, at nakita ko talaga bumabaliktad yung narrative eh. So kung mm-hmm. ang the Dark Lord is Marcos sa, sa, sa crowd ko, doon hindi necessarily dark, dark Lord si Marcos, for instance, kasi gusto niyang mag, mag-land reform sa Shenda Luisita eh. Actually, muntik na nga, muntik na nga palayain yung Shenda Luisita kasi gusto niyang gantihan yung mga Aquinos, di ba? Right. Uh, Tapos naging presidente bigla si Cory, naudlot yung land reform sa Hacienda Luisita. Tapos in fact, nagkaroon pa ng troop, ng, ng army doon, ng security forces doon na tinawag nilang Yellow Army. So ang dami mong oh, mamaliktad eh. So kung right, sa national right. mythology, yung, yung yellow was a symbol so, of... May Jola massacre pa. Yeah, 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 pa. Yeah. Yung, yung yellow was a symbol of national liberation. And for me, you know, I, I'm actually a mm. bit of a dilawan myself. For me, I still think of yellow as a color of national liberation. But I also acknowledge na doon sa Hacienda Luisita, there was a yellow, there was something they called a yellow army. So yun yung color of repression, you know? Right. And then I... I, I, I militia ba ito, Leloy? I mean, militia, militia. Or, uh, this was militia. militia. No, mm-hmm. minili pa yung nalalami yung mga kafgu, yung mga civilian forces right. at the time right. ng right. Right. So it was a kind of militia slash kaf, kafgu type formation slash private army. Actually, hindi alam ng mga tao kasi hindi naman sila privy doon sa politics na nangyayari doon sa... Correct. Alam lang nila may mga armado mga tao doon na sila yung binaman yeah. ngayon. Yun lang naman yung alam nila. Tapos tinawag din sa ganilang yellow army, right? So, dahil bumabaliktad na narrative doon. And I found that really interesting because, you know, it challenged myself and my own beliefs, you know. So, uh, so ano belief mo initially? Was it that Star Wars Hollywood script? Na yeah, parang, yeah, yeah. The end I mean, of Marcos was liberation of all? Yeah, I mean, a little bit. And and, and mm. to a certain degree, I, I still believe it now. You know, I, I think that EDSA did not solve our problems. I think it, right. it stopped the bleeding. Yun yung analogy. The hemorrhage. Diba? Oh, hemorrhage, yeah. diba? Kasi, yeah. unari, may pasyente ka, uh, you know, nagbe-bleed siya. If you stop the bleeding, that doesn't mean mm. that the patient will be healthy, right? That just mm. means that the patient will not die right, <laughs> or, right. or you bring the patient farther from dying, right? So it's, mm-hmm. it's a necessity, but it's never enough. Uh, Leloy, uh, the, I mean, first of all, can you give us an overview of ano ba nangyari dito sa Hacienda Luisa, Luisita? Because ang narrative naman ng mga quote-unquote dilawan is that hindi naman sila uh, Corey or yung, yung family mismo ni Pinoy no? are, are in charge of that. You have the Kuangkos in general, right? And by the way, may away din yung mga yan, di ba? Mga Kuangkos against each other. So to blame the Aquino family per se, it's also unfair because 
their share there is limited. In fact, I remember parang Noy Noy was saying something na limitado rin pwede niyang gawin kasi uh-huh. it's not naman his private property. Can you give us some idea about the political economy dyan sa, uh, sa Asyenda Luisita? Just you I mean, know, for I mean, factual historical analysis. Yeah. For Noy Noy, medyo totoo yun kasi ang layo na lumal... I mean, every generation luma- na, la- of course, na, na, dilute, na nadadilute yung power, di ba? So by the time you right. get to Noy Noy and to Chris, for example, so you know, medyo diluted na yung kapangyarihan nila doon. Uh, so there is some validity there. And also, uh, with respect to Noy Noy, very clear naman na dumistansya siya dun sa uncle niya who was really, you know, giving Hacienda Luisita a hard time, si Piping Kuhanko, mm-hmm. right? Towards the end right. of the administration, eh, chipwera na si, si Piping, di ba? Si, right. uh, yung kamukha ni, medyo kamukha ni, yung medyo kamukha ni Babalu, di ba? Uh, eh, chipwera na siya. Um, but for Cory, it's a bit more interesting because... Mm. Uh, she promised um, land reform, diba? including Hacienda Luisita. And that was going to be the barometer of whether or not her administration achieved her social justice goals. Siya mismo nagsabi, diba? na right. dito ako susukatin sa land reform. Um, right. Kaso nung siya yung naging presidente, ang nangyari sa Hacienda Luisita, it was uh, subject to uh, yung tinatawag nating stock distribution option. So hindi pinamigay yung lupa sa mga tao, binigyan sila ng stocks. And we should note that by that time, sobrang liit na lang nung stocks kasi yung coverage nung stocks na yun were only the agricultural areas. And maraming areas doon na kinonvert into say commercial areas. Commercial, Even though you yeah, yeah. may, may Robinsons doon, hindi yun covered nung stocks nung time na yun, right? So, right. stocks na nakuha ng mga tao, agriculture area, tapos valued at, some, at something quite low. So, so I remember, you know, meron, may, so, so yung stocks na yun, dapat, that should be giving dividends, di ba? Mm-hmm. So, uh, just to give you an example of how lugi yung mga magsasaka dun sa stocks, um, sometime in the 2000s, close pa si GMA at si Cory itong panahon na to, nagpagawa mm-hmm. ng SETEX, di ba? Tapos nung panahon na yun, uh, yeah, yeah. pinadaan ni GMA yung, S- yung SETEX sa Asyenda Luisita. Now, yung rumor on the ground was dahil magkakampi si Cory at si GMA at that time, di ba? Parehong anti-era forces, yun yung parang reward. Now, we don't know if that's true. Mm-hmm. We're just saying that that's the way it was read on the ground, right? Mm. So, SETEX, pinadaan sa Asyenda Luisita, uh, may tumaas yung value. So, dapat may dividendo. So, yung mga respondents ko sabi, Sir, mas ma- ma- uh, lugi pa po kami nung claim namin yung dividendo kasi mas mahal pa po yung tricycle fare namin papunta dun sa barangay kung saan kami nag-claim ng dividendo kaysa dun sa mismo dividendo. Lalo niya, alam ko something like, uh, Mark, please uh, try to come in because I know you want to also bring in the critique of the mythology of... An- but parang narinig ko like 200 pesos lang binibigay sa kanila per year or something like that. Like, some of ah, the numbers I heard were like shocking. Like how can... Yeah, mga ganun. Iba-iba rin, iba, iba rin talaga eh. So, I mean, that's mm. just one example na, na sabi nila, kumuha, kumuha pa ako, nalugi pa ako. How many years right. did you follow the whole uh, Ashenda Luisita story? Ah, uh, interesting. What mga one year, but very crucial year, because 2009 to 2010 election year. Mm-hmm. Right, right. So uh, ah, the no, year. No, no. So Corey's uh, passed away, uh, and then Noy is coming in. Pero pejo uh, pejo na kamali din ako dun eh, kasi 2009 to 2010 sabi ko pinakaos ako yung mga magsasaka dun. Sabi ko impossible manalo si Noy Noy dito. Right, Pero, right. Mata sa kanya. Well, guess what? I was wrong. Panalo si Noy Noy yeah. dito. Right, which which right. led me to yung yung second yung second ano ko yung second um, line of analysis ko na kahit mm-hmm. nagagalit sila sa mga ano nila sa mga landlord nila meron pa ring sense na there's no other choice um mm. Mm, so much for, because, for freedom and liberation no parang start lar- sila doon no yeah. largely because the alternative there was the communist party of the philippines which to me mm. was a worse alternative right Right. And uh, okay, going back to again, sorry, Mark, I'm cutting you because this is very interesting. I just want to make this simpler for a lot of people who are not historians or specialists. Like, so think about what, what prevented Cory Aquino from effectuating or implementing is uh, effective na land reform. Why is this such a problematic thing? Is this because lack of political will on the part of Cory? Is this because Cory didn't know what she was talking about? Is this because the oligarchs, liberal oligarchs were controlling it? Is it because the remnants of the Marcos regime, the Coancos who were friendly with Marcos were preventing this? Of course, it's a combination of many oh. factors. But, but on the part of Cory, 
how much agency she had and how much culpability she should have. I know this is a very sensitive issue. Uh, Sorry, nalang sa mga dilaw and friends natin. But we have a historian here who did a very sensitive research that I think is relevant for our discussion today. So please go ahead. Yeah. Hirapan mo ko. Eh. Nako, mabibbm <laughs> tayo na to. Mark, <laughs> tawagin mo mga BBM ko. followers. Yung mga uh, things like, you know, like I, I really engage in topics that I don't, that, that make me uncomfortable because I really Sorry. like... I really like co- I mean I mean I did this to myself right di ko naman ka- ka- sarili mo kasalanan <laughs> di ba pero I I mean I really like Cory I, I I like her as a figure mm-hmm. I think she's very important I think she because, because I think she she restored democracy she restored mm-hmm. democracy and she stopped the bleeding and I think and I yeah. think if you look at her she's just one example of somebody who grappled with her morality as a president something that mm-hmm. um a lot of other presidents don't do and I think that kind right. of sense of interiority in Corey that we saw right. is really a great example of what it means to to be a leader but, so so mahirap sa so you're saying pag- conscientious leadership uh, conscious leadership parang ganun mm, so mahirap sa pag-usapan tong mm. agenda nila kasi it's really a blot i mean it's really a blot on, I know. on the record of someone i like yeah. you know so um well you know it's it's ang nangyari kasi ang nangyari kasi she promised agrarian reform law right so so unang mm. iteration ng carp Uh, ng, compre- ng comprehensive agrarian reform law at saka, mm. saka ma- so 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 i think we should credit her na nagkaroon naman ng batas pero right. early on na read yung batas na yon by uh, a group that was called the landlord block in the house of representatives right yon like, yeah i'm all nag amend ng bat- nag amend ng batas right. now what is what is the so the question here becomes what is the accountability of the president relative right. to the lower house Um, and that's a very complicated question because the, the the president can always say that's the lower house, that's not me. But we yeah, know yeah. we know that in our system the president controls the lower house, right? I, in fact, mm. I once had, I once had a senator friend tell me that uh, every single speaker of the house since the time of um, since the time of sino bang first Osmeña, Sergio right. Osmeña has been appointed by the president, right? Grabe, no? It's an appointed it's right. an appointed position, right? Right. So, so the lower house is really, you know, if you want to be completely cynical about it, it's part yeah. of Malacanang, right? And you see this now, diba? Dito sa Farmali, diba? It's practically the, the defense team of Malacanang. So, so what's the accountability? I guess there is some accountability because of the closeness of the lower house with with with, with, mm-hmm. with the president. So you're saying she she could have pressed some buttons and things could have been better. Just just to add, no, I mean, um, the political scientist me is telling this. Corey's greatest contribution At the same time, perhaps also the point of criticism for her was that the moment that Marcos was out, until the moment na promulgate ng 1987 constitution, there were all there was almost a year where she was a revolutionary leader. Uh, so yeah. she had absolute power. She could have easily created a new monarchy, a kind of like a royalty with Chris Aquino as princess and all. She could have created a complete dictatorship, a revolutionary government, as Duterte wants to use the term. But she didn't choose that. She actually, chose actually, to actually pave the way for a. Uh, liberal constitutional democracy. Actually, I think in, we should give her credit for that, right? Kaya nga si Andalusita, kinover na ni Marcos yun. Okay, in a kind of really vindictive way, di ba? Kasi right. kinover niya yung, for land reform, kinover ni Marcos nung 80s eh. <laughs> Parang gantihan na right. lang, di ba? Kinover niya right. for uh, land reform nung 80s. You know what she could have done? She could just, just ano, let the Marcos order stand. That's one thing right. she could have done. Right, right. Uh, Mark, do you have something also there? Don't say Hacienda Luis that I issue. I know uncomfortable na si Lele, but sorry, man, that was your PhD. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It after, was part of the book. The, so we want to drill you. After the Cory yeah. uh, uh, presidential term ba, in the succeeding presidents, wala ding natuloy dun sa Hacienda Lucita. Wala nang uh, again reform. Na nag- follow through? Uh, up up to this yeah, time. Yeah, the, yeah, two see, decades that follow. Uh, ay, ay, yung yung work ni Saturnina Boras, pinapakita niya na yung agrarian reform really did not progress in yung places na kailangan may kasi yung yung agrarian reform natin merong merong ano merong voluntary transfer, 'di ba? Nagbo-volunteer yung mga tao. Tapos mm-hmm. merong transfer from the state to the poor ganyan. So ang nangyari, ang kinover ng mga gobyerno yung mga low hanging fruit, yung mga nagbo-volunteer, yung mga right. gobyerno. So yun yung mga inunang kinover para nag magmukhang may ginagawa ka, right? right. So it's not just they excluded the Shenda Luisita. They were excluding cases of land reform or agrarian reform where matigas yung ulo ng may-ari or ng Panginoong may lupa if you want to use activist right. terms. So, uh, uh, Shenda Luisita is just one case study of that. Right, right. By the way, oh, according to Saturnino Flores, yeah, tulaan niyo kung sino yung pinaka-mahusay na 
post-Marcos president in terms of agrarian reform, in terms of yung land distributed on a per-year basis. What, Gloria? I mean, sino ba? Lanyo, Lanyo. Sino sa tingin nyo? Ano, Gloria maybe? Era, <laughs> Ikaw, Mark. Era. Era, yeah. I was thinking like oh, maybe like, three kung, years kung, lang siya. Kukwentay mo yung hectarage na na-distribute on a per on a per year basis. Right. Is this a coincidence or is this uh, because of populism of ERAP and all the well, Meron ka mga real agrarian reform advocates naman sa ERAP administration. Eh, diba? so, right. Si Morales, for example. Yeah. Right. So may pagka-Duterte na may pagka-left left mm-hmm. populism ng konti dyan. Going back again to that, you still called yourself a Dilawan, right? I mean, again, we can... We, you, you, you love doing that, right? I'm still like... It. And it's like you're inviting the trolls. So nakita mo ginagawa mo sa Rappler among others. But in what sense are you a Dilawan? Obviously, you're not a card holder of the Liberal Party. You're you're not actively involved in their campaign. So, what do we mean by you being Dilawan? For because unfortunately, oh, because unfortunately, uh, dito ang understanding ng mga trolls, especially because uh, pag Dilawan, ano ka, tuta ka ng Liberal Party, binabayaran ka ng mga oligarchs, blah, 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 right? Uh, all the accusation against all of us, right? But in what sense are you Dilawan? Uh, Do you mean you're a liberal? Is yeah, I'm a liberal. Mean? Pero also, uh, I, I, ngayon ko lang nga share to. It's actually in my blood. So, um, my middle name is Estrada. So, oh. <laughs> so I come from the Estrada family of Senator Eva Estrada Calo mm-hmm. and the poet um, Nina Estrada. Mm-hmm. So, when Ninoy was about to come home, my lola Nina, na kapatid ng lolo ko, came up with the line na Ninoy hindi ka nag-iisa. Right. At sila yung kapatid niya, my Lola Eva, decided to use that alongside the imagery of yellow dahil tayo mm. yellow we're going around the old dog tree, di ba? You can see this in Manolo Quezon. So, right. the idea of uh, associating the Dilawan with Ninoy Aquino actually came from my family. So, in, in that sense, in that sense, you know, my, so original I, sin pala sa inyo. Uh, I, 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 I'm a bit involved in the original sin. Yeah. Oh, um, man. So, so, that's that's why I'm really a Dilawan talaga. Yeah. Um, I heard about your Lola. You wrote about your Lola in a preface to one of your books, but I didn't know it's it goes that deep no? yeah, uh, in terms yeah. of your liberalism. But you're also a big fan of Rizal. I mean, of what uh-huh. a scholar of Rizal. And in fact, a lot of my understanding of Rizal also comes from your works, among others. I mean, I used to be a much more Sanders type of, of a Democrat and all. But after reading your works, I was a little like, Maybe liberalism is not too bad, and your works on Rizal, among others, uh, help me to help inform my my point of view. So, so in what sense is Rizal also responsible for you being a Dilawan? Was Rizal a Dilawan? Yeah, I think Rizal would have identified probably with, a, if not the liberal party, then a liberal, then a liberal party, right. because right. malino naman yung demands niya, diba? he dema- it was demanding from Spain freedom of association, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, which is right, right, rights-based liberalism. Mm. And then we, when he realized that the Philippines could not gain that under Spain, it was just an impossible task. He said, okay, mag-independence tayo. Right? So, so uh, the liberalism preceded uh, the nationalism, right? Right. Um, because if Spain was willing to accede to yung liberal demands, Hindi naman mag hindi naman magka-campaign for independence si Rizal, mm-hmm. eh, Right, right. So, what do you think about this thing na sinasabi si Bonifacio yung tutong hero, si Rizal ay hindi, ay anti-revolution sure, all of that. Uh, what is your take on that issue? Uh, you know, I... Well, the Rizal, Diliman consensus, I think that's the well, term. But you know, of course, Rizal, Rizal I, I mean, pe- I suggest people read yung work ni Floro Kibuya and yung... Um, right. A uh, nation aborted. And, and Floro makes the argument that Rizal was not anti-revolution. He really wasn't. I mean... Uh, or at the very least, not 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 anti the separation of the Philippines from Spain, it, right. This is an this is actually old news. Like jo- John Schumacher make, made this argument too. Na you know roughly, nakikita mo naman yung transition. Eh. Uh, if you mm. read No Limit Anger, eh, if you read it carefully, that's where you see the transition. That's why he's saying yeah. it's possible for the Philippines to stay under this regime, yeah. right? It's and then it, it, it goes dark. Uh, we, you know, in, in the second El Filipino oh, oh, oh. major dark na and dapat sana may trilogy, but. Yeah, of course, that yeah. happened. But what about the idea that Rizal was an eventualist? In, in a sense, he was a reformist who believed in gradual reforms to prepare the society for, for a mature democratic uh, political setup. I mean, that's I mean, my understanding of his political theory. Yung, yung conversation yeah, with Pio Valenzuela, which is right. si Bonifacio of Sands Pio Valenzuela. Sinend ni Dapitan. Yeah, yeah. Tapos, right. iba, iba yung interpretation kung ano yung nangyari doon. But there is one interpretation that essentially says that he just said, we're not ready, right? Right. Uh, 
kumuha muna kayo ng barel, right? So, so right. logistical yung concern eh. Uh, yeah. As opposed to anything ideological. I, I think Benedict Anderson's take was that he was just not well informed about what was happening in Cuba, for instance, how bad this was going for Spain. Perhaps if he had an idea of that, like Bonifacio, he would have been convinced that the Spanish cannot fight the two-front war if it gets yeah. vicious. And eventually Bonifacio's gamble paid off, except not for himself, but for Aguinaldo and other people. Maybe Nick Joaquin line yeah. na rin tong, tong push forward. Ko. Yeah. So, so you are uh, Dilawan in the sense that you believe that the basic civil liberties are very essential to any kind of healthy society in a democratic society, especially for the Philippines. So you don't buy this argument na, kasi one of your contributions is also to remind na hindi Western yung idea ng human rights, that the Philippines was actually also a major contributor to the development of the human rights regime in the United Nations. Can you, can you remind our audience? Kasi marami nagsabi, eh mga human rights, Western yan, hindi naman bagay sa atin. Tayo mga Eastern Asian country, Asian values. What do you have to say on that from result time forward, our contribution to that? Because I'll start with a very specific example. So the right. right petition, the, human, the United Nations Commission on Human Rights, which is now the United Nations Council on Human Rights. So anyone can actually petition them to say, look into yung human rights violations in my country. Right. Right? So right. the council wanted, to, under that provision, the council wanted to send someone to the Philippines to look into yung human rights provisions, uh, human rights violations of the war on drugs. At that time, sabi ni Ernesto Abella, yung spokesperson ni Duterte, who's apparently running for some position. For president, yeah. I think midnight show or something, yeah, di ba? Very weird. Yeah. As so an independent. Yeah. Sabi ni Abella, this is a Western imposition. Ang hindi alam yes, ni Abella, yung rule na yun was actually designed by the, DF, by the DFA of the Philippines. Yeah. Right? Sila Where he ended up working as a USEC later on. So yeah. if someone who will work in DFA doesn't know the history of DFA's uh, con uh, contribution, no? Uh, so actually, yung right to petition, uh, that was that was a legacy of a lot of people from our de Department of Foreign Affairs, from Salvador Lopez, Jose Ingles, to Carlos P. Romulo. Right. Sila yung, sila yung, ay, hindi lang naman sila, pero sila yung, isa sa mga, yung mga pinaka-vocal doon sa right. advokasyang yun. So hindi yun Western ni position. Ano lang yun, batas lang yan na linabi ng DFA natin uh, in the, 19, right. the 1950s and 60s. Let, let me rewind a little bit uh, on this. No? Um... What is your take on the General Luna issue? Because this is very important. Mm -hmm. I think both of us separately came, came up with similar understanding that the General Luna movie, right, in many ways, oh. you know, essentially cooked the ground, right, for a Duterte revolution. But before we go that, can we, what is your take on General Luna? Because General Luna, I mean, some would say he had a more French understanding of revolution, more brutal, more... More uh, violent, more authoritarian. Is that your reading as a historian? I mean, what what if Luna won? What if General Luna's plan was listened to? Talaga nag nagkaroon ng guerrilla warfare from my place in Benguet, Baguio, Cordillera. And nanal tayo. Ito mga na Vietnam natin yung mga uh, uh, mga kano. Sa tingin mo, what kind of Philippines we would have had? Because that was a that was a possibility uh, also, right? That was a contingency that's, too. That's a perfect uh, analogy, Richard. Yung yung Vietnam, right? Because similar right. yung conditions ng Vietnam at saka ng Philippines yung time na yun, you had Right. essentially uh, a, less, a less technologically sophisticated force that knew the terrain and was facing right. uh, um, a much more powerful Western invader in the United States. And yet Vietnam won, the Philippines lost. Right. And the biggest difference is really Vietnam uh, had the strategies of the Chinese, which was um, guerrilla warfare, and the Filipinos did not because, well, they did. Be, uh, Luna actually had studied guerrilla warfare, but they right. didn't win the war because Aguinaldo was in insistent on set peace battles, traditional battles, right. kasi gusto niya dignified. Mayabang at insecure si Aguinaldo, di ba? Well, tsaka, yep. tsaka si, Lu, si, si Luna is not novo like, is not a parvin, was not a parvenu. I'm parvenu, yeah. Yeah. Nick Joaquin's terms here. Huh? Uh, he was not a parvenu, so he's confident. Sabi niya, I, you know, I'm a gentleman. I don't care. Like, uh, yeah. we can do guerrilla. You know, yung, yung, yung mas confident siya pa, yung mas willing maging... Yeah. Maging, there's no face. There's no need there's to no make a face. face. It's already there. there. Right. Alta na siya. Yeah. So, so yeah. guerrilla warfare. I have no idea what, what, what kind of a politician he would be because he never styled himself as a politician. He always styled himself right. a, as, a, as, a kind of, uh, as a kind of general. But uh, yung main qualm ko with the General Luna film is yung treatment yes. nila of itong Sinaboy Camino, the people who compromised, right? right. Uh, you know, at that time, hundreds of thousands na yung Pilipinong patay. So I don't think you you would have been a traitor to say tama na ang patayan suko na. You know, at one point you really need to know. At hindi na reflect yan sa movie, no? I, you had no idea how many people were dying, civilians yeah. and all, yeah. Yeah. Bakit? I mean, 
eh, lalo na kung politiko ka, alam mo naman na hindi ikaw yung mamamatay, eh, di ba? Mm-hmm. So you are sending people off to their deaths, right? And so in in a way, the responsible politician should take that into account, right? Um, by by some estimates, the 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 death count was was approaching a million, right? In a population of seven to seven to eight million, right? So I think. I think it's not completely a disservice to say Suhuna. And mm-hmm. the fact that the, the, right. that the movie portrayed them as kind of these sniveling traitors, right? And then created a bi- binary, di ba? Bayan or sarili, walang middle ground, di ba? Okay, Lela. So, pinag-usapan natin yung movie na General Luna, which may not necessarily be as reflective of the actual person and the complexity of his calculus, among others. Not to mention... You know, yung, nawala yung context eh, no? Up to a million Filipinos may have died during the, uh, the American-Filipino uh, War. So lahat yan medyo wala dun sa movie. Uh, but what we can agree upon at least, uh, perhaps, at least, at least two of us is, in many ways, General Runa was kind of post-Rizal and, and pre-Duterte, right? I mean, the mm-hmm. movie, the personality, yung nagmumura. In fact, I think you also came with this realization na, kasi pinanood ko yung mga videos ni Duterte dati, hindi siya, hindi na ginagamit yung PI eh. May mga, yeah. may mga terms siya na Bisaya, may mga, alam mo, marami siyang ano eh. Pero yung PI na PI, napaka Luna, General Luna yan. I don't know if it's a Gabunada thing, I don't know if it were concocted, it's a Duterte instinct thing, he just saw what works. Pero ikaw, what's your, your take on that? And as a historian, as a Filipino, as a scholar, how did you greet the um the rise of Duterte and, and the way he has just dominated our imagination and even Philippine studies shockingly right Richard, around uh, this this time uh in i think 2015 this time right. away uh, this much time away from the election right. we were on boy abunda na alam mo yon oh Tapos, yeah 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 oh man okay. like those were the days Hello, Mark, hindi ikaw lang pa showbiz. Ha? Showbiz din kami dati. I don't know. That ba, 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 don't ba, underestimate ba. us. Yeah, mga showbiz din kami. <laughs> kay, Pinapasa- kay Tito Boy. Pinasadahan natin lahat ng ano, yes. kandidato. And if you said Duterte was the dark horse. Yes. I yes. said, I remember that very well. Uh, and ako, I went even more hardline. I don't yeah. think he's going to win. So, mm, in other right, words, right. Ikaw, ikaw uh, may ek may, meron kang meron kang excuse uh, you can claim <laughs> na you gave him a chance ako i i can't i can't so right, right, ako. Right. And, i was scared uh, yeah. I, was, i was scared i was hoping uh, people will decide better okay ito na <laughs> naglaglagan na but i was scared It's like oh my god what's gonna happen and well exactly what i feared happened extrajudicial killings and everything like that so i mean uh, And genuine sa Facebook ko, everything is there. Hindi ko din nalit. A lot of them are in public, among others. In fact, that was my that was the time I became kind of public figure, controversial guy I am today, right? But yes, Lelo. So back at so na understand mo si Noy Noy. Why would a historian all the on Sunday? Ah. Alam to bakit to be, kaya yung yung Noy Noy hindi ko naman na underestimate. Na underestimate uh-huh. si Ashen da Luisita. Ah, oh, ang, ang prediction ko kay Noy Noy, ang prediction ko kay Noy Noy, ah, okay, sorry, nationally boy. pero talo sa Hacienda Luisita. Oh. But actually, so akala ko si Gibo yung mananalo sa Hacienda Luisita. So he also It's won sa Hacienda Luisita. Oh, oh, mga DDS, makinig kayo diyan. <laughs> si Pinoy nanalo mismo. Eh, oh. mga taga Hacienda Luisita. So you know, you cannot outvote them. Let's just put it that way. So okay, so on So yeah. pumalpak I mean like I understand uh, my DDS colleagues there and mga pro Marcos colleagues there. It would not have been Uh, it would not have been stupid for anyone to predict na matatalo si Noy Noy sa Hacienda Luisita, right? Pero, right, right, and you can course. make of that what you will. Malakas yung liberal, malakas yung makinarya ng liberal yeah. party or, or forgiving or, ang Pilipino or forgiving, yeah. right? I, 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 I don't know how to interpret that. Yung, yung, yung Duterte, doon talaga ako pumalpak and, and, and as a result, I've, I've decided to never predict again. And, yeah. and, and uh, Because that was such an interesting election because hindi, right. hindi natin alam at that time yung, ano, yung impact ng social media, di ba? Yeah. I thought that social media was kind of this small silo because even yeah. at that time when we when we both said, you know, when you said that Duterte could win and I said he is unlikely to win. Yeah. Um, he was at 5 to 3%, 3 to 5%, percent, just to be fair to me. Huh? The fact that I said he's a dark horse, him at being 3 to 5%, percent, it's like me oh. saying Bongo will be the next president. Oh. Right? Oh. Let's just put, or Laxon will ah, be the next president. Uh, so, ba, in fairness ano to me, I, I'm just saying, I'm just oh. saying, you know, just to be fair to me, Leloy, uh, on, this is like September, I, mga ganun lang oh. yun, 2015, si Po yatang nagsasearch oh. nun, kind of like Isko, right? Oh. Si Mar struggling like Lenny, like, You know, some of the some parallels there. But why did you think that someone like Duterte will not win? Didn't you Didn't you feel na may, meron siyang, you know, his power of 
parang kindling tong authoritarian nostalgia and all that. Didn't you think that will appeal to the Filipino political culture, or, or was this a wishful thinking that we won't buy someone like that? Uh, I mean, yeah, of I, course, I, my I, contingency, but I'm just saying, like, I guess generally, one yeah. part of it is hindi ako naniwala of hindi ako naniwala sa electoral effect of repudiating the yellow narrative. Because I had made the uh, at least on a micro scale sa Shenda Luisita, de ba na na marerepudiate yung yellow narrative don hindi na nalal, yeah, yeah. So maybe ah, so but, parang Maybe my false positive, oh, like false oh, negative. Okay, okay, I get what's from, from one from yeah, one yeah, palpa yeah. from one palpak to another, right? Yeah, I get uh, what I'm saying. Then, yeah, yeah. And then at that time, like I just really thought that ang lakas ng action star potentiality ni Grace po, di ba? Yes, because yes. ang lakas talaga nung eto yung hindi hindi rin napapansin ng mga tao. Ang lakas ng appeal ni FPJ at saka ni Erap. Ang tagal matinag niyan. So After EDSA 2, for example, uh, Ronnie Holmes is always, always always said this. Even after EDSA 2... Ronnie Holmes, the head of Pulse, of Pulse Asia, Asia, just to be clear to folks. Yeah, the yeah. numbers of Pulse Asia were still showing na ang taas ng numbers ni ERAP. Pero right. ayaw paniwalaan ng middle class kasi sabi, oh, eh, nag-EDSA 2 na eh. Yeah. Yung na namin yan si ERAP, di ba? Pero yung mythology of the action star yeah. is just so powerful, right? So I thought that ano, Grace Paul was carrying that legacy, yung mythology ng action star ni ni FPJ tsaka you, you know it uh, the, the numbers bore it out so i thought like right. it was going to win at that time um na, and, and so what i've come to realize is uh ang bilis magbago ng philippine politics in this la- in these last few in in this in, in this year before the election right and i also realized that and that's the first thing i realized the second thing i realized is that social media is is powerful right um which maria ressa yeah. was always saying we were yeah. not listening to her before right yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. i have a question then like uh, yes, go, Mark. i always look yung nangyari sa social media kay duterte uh, in the same way na nangyari din sa social media diyan sa us so uh, yeah. parang, do you see the same effect that yeah. happened then what happened na diba the I mean, yung populist and the Yeah, I mean, this is where Maria saw something that we didn't, right? Um, yeah. Yung things like yung connect, yung, like the Cambridge Analytica thing. The thing right. is yung Cambridge Analytica and, uh, and yung effect ng Cambridge Analytica on our election, hindi natin ma-document really well because a lot of it is skullduggery, right? So the yeah. problem with social media is sometimes we just can't surface the effect of this skullduggery because we can't do research on it, right? Yeah. Sometimes you can do extensive research, for example, on things that on things like yung the role of PR firms and my friend Jonathan Ong has done really right. great work on that kasi mas madali mong ungkatin yun eh pero yung ganun naka underground like the influence yeah. say, of like whatever China or right. the influence of something like Cambridge Analytica this right. is something that is party speculative right it's not something that you can do an academic yeah. study on major shady underground yeah. mafia shady shady underground. control yeah. farms yeah. and all that and control yeah. farms yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So but just because hindi natin ma-verify through academic through a kind of rigorous academic study right. that doesn't mean it's not happening and that 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 doesn't mean there are no ways of skinning the surface of what actually right. happened and I think that is what Maria has bravely done diba na as a journalist as a, as a journalist, journalist. Yeah. in fact it's something that only journalists can do because academics require greater like like more more pan- kind of yeah. analytical heft yeah. than that to, right. to publish And, But, and limited uh, din at the same time our we our access is perhaps not as good yeah. as journalists yeah, yeah. the amount of data they have access to that they can do a big data analysis we don't have that uh, Sources. in the university is actually right i mean that's why i've been like traversing university in journalism because I, i i try to you know make up for the disadvantages of each side although i'm accused of being neither of both which oh. I'm, i'm willing to accept but doon ko nakita yung limitations like as a journalist i can get a cabinet minister to interview Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have on the record defense ministers. In term, I couldn't do it as an academic. I just don't think I will ever be in a position to do that, unless you're, I don't know, you're opera level celebrity academic. Mm-hmm. There are there, but but I just feel as journalists, sometimes you have a level of access mm-hmm. to the really core of power. And not to mention, Lela, you know it, right? One of the controversial things I, I debated with some of the big, the, uh, you know, propagandists of of the president. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't think I could have done that if I were not. Uh, In, in in the media and all and that gave me also some information and access i don't think i would have uh, so so in fairness no, you I know think... like ako, a lot of the a lot of the no, the reason why i know that the social media threat was real is because i talked to you and because you have all this right. insider information that i'm not sure you want to talk about in a podcast like this <laughs> pero para 
Yeah, Para, we, can, I, we can open up all the time. Oh, oh, <laughs> Short oh, of, oh. Oh, alam na ni Mark yan kasi minsan, I put Mark on the on the record. Oh, ano yung bisabi ni Isko yan? Kasi we'll yeah. go to Isko shortly because you mentioned something very interesting. Yung, yung durability of the 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 era FPJ kind of populism, right? Which is quite different from the Duterte kind of populism, right? Uh, we can debate about, I have names for it, polite populism, whatever you want to do, populism, light, alternate populism. But because Mark, I remember Mark was, Mark was, um, medyo, si kay Mark hindi siya naniniwala na Poe was still doing well eh. Kasi remember, even in the latest pulsation survey, Poe is the number one second preference. So mm. she's like easy for everyone. Everyone oh. is okay with her. And she used to do better at the first preference. So you can see hanggang ngayon, no, 2022 elections, oh. the era of FPJ kind of appeal is still there. And this is important because this is also, I would believe, connected to ISCO. How do you understand ISCO then? Well, you know, si course, of course, uh, initially nakiride on dun sa Arab mythology and uh, was being groomed by Arab to be the mayor of Manila. And then when Arab overstepped his bounds, that's when Isko decided na tatakbo siya against Arab. Um, and what Isko was able to beat was a really etiolated version of Arab. This was not the right. Arab, this was not the electorally potent Arab that we knew from. 10 years right. back. Medyo enervated na eh. Yeah, medyo. This is, uh, uh, era friend. was really messing up Manila. My God. And I was yeah. I was a resident of Manila during this time kasi nagtrabaho ko sa Lasal. Well, yeah. It was terrible. Like, it reminded yeah. me. Like, I was a resident of Quezon. It was hell. It, it was took hell. four yeah. hours to go back and I'm teaching Lasal then QC and all of that. Yeah. It was tapos, it was tapos yung, yeah. yung missis ko may office sa, sa Escolta. So pagbaba mo doon sa LRT, daming kolorum na nagbebenta doon ng kung right. ano-ano, di ba? Tapos parang, tapos feel mo, to just to get through that thicket, to get to Escolta, parang human traffic na kaagad, right? He just didn't, he just, he just yeah, didn't care. He just that didn't care, right? Yeah. It was reminiscent of the of Quezon City in the 90s, yung parang yung, yung matay era na kahit saan ka pumunta may basura. And all and, and, and these problems are actually easy to solve, you know. Parang it, low hanging fruits. These yeah. are low hanging fruits. So at least yeah. in the case of Quezon City, so, when I was living there yeah. in the nineties uh, and early two thousands, overnight, no nagim uh, mayor si Belmonte, na wala yung mm-hmm. basura. Ah, uh, ganon din yung ginawa ni Isko, you know. Parang i- inayos niya yung mga vendor. He didn't get rid of them. He gave them spaces, right? But at the very least, mm-hmm. parang there was this idea and I, and there was a kind of civ- civic message there. You have a right to sell but people also have a right to their road. So let's find a way to live together. And that's what I liked about the yung ISCO message, this idea of living right. together or a kind of idea of uh, of civics because that's really what civics right. is. Let's right. live together, right? Um, so overnight, it was low-hanging fruit but there was a message message of civic subtending. So actually, I'm an Isco Moreno fan. I'm just a bigger Lenny, Lenny Robredo fan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're not alone. I'm, there are many it folks it, in your dilemma. Yeah, yeah. Huh? There are many it, folks sharing your dilemma. Yeah. Sa akin naman hindi dilemma. Medyo malinaw na mahal ko talaga si Vice. Pero, I mean, this is one thing. Like, It's nice to have an election where, I mean, you don't mind the alternative. You don't mind the other you don't necessarily mind some other people there, right? Right. Um, Kung sakaling na nalasis ka, pero tao dyan, hindi mo naman ayaw. Right, right. Oh, Len, uh, Lelo, uh, Mark, by the way, if you have a question, please also ask. Do you, do you have an issue dun sa characterization niya ng Manila among others? Yeah, ano naman. Siyempre, it's, it came from his uh, own experience. So, na-experience oh, niya talaga yung... So, yeah, so yeah. ikaw, uh, Lelo, I mean, how do you see Isko Moreno? Because one of the things that really impressed me with the guy is like, I mean, the the, la- the first time I heard about him as a politician was an interview on CNN and, and uh, during the hostage crisis, and and you know that he he became like everyone was you know making fun of him, you know, yung balok to daw English niya, he couldn't explain himself. I mean, I mean, he didn't give the best impression back in the days when he was the vice mayor, no. But once he came back in 2019, and that's where I and Mark got to know each other. I saw a completely transformed guy. I mean, and and I got to interview him later on and, and exchange notes with him and all of that. Like, I could see the effort of the guy to really improve himself. So hindi lang ito yung uh, fixing the gaps by the autumn of patriarch na nawawala na si era, hindi lang low hanging fruit. It seems he, ha- he really has a vision. He tried to educate himself, improve himself, taking executive courses around the world, mm-hmm. best practices, among other things. Isn't that a kind of a new form of populism that we never had before? Because if you look at the case of Arab FPJ, it's, I think these people felt there, this is it. This is the best you can get out of me and be happy with that. But with Isco, is constantly trying to improve himself, to, to tweak and to, 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 to upgrade himself, or at least that's, that's, that's the impression I get. Is this a kind of a new kind of 
populism or is he kind of a hybrid mutation <laughs> kasi ko, uh, mutation of Dutertismo and Erapismo <laughs> and he's trying to put all of that together. I mean, what is your reading of this person? Of Isco Moreno. You know, and I'm not just sure. It's, it's, too, it's too early in the campaign. Uh, but what yeah. I will say is that there are interesting feints. So, for example, nobody's talking about why Action Democratico. But Action Democratico ah, is right. actually a great brand. Social Democratic. Yeah, it's a it's great kind of... brand. It's the Raul Rojo brand. Yes. A lot of the progressive figures who, a lot of right. progressive figures are progressive activists who have entered you know, various campaigns in various government offices, they cut their teeth during the youth activism triggered by right. Raul Rocco. So, you know, one thing I want to know is what's the relationship between Isco mm. Moreno's current politics, local politics, and the vision of national politics that could be anchored on, say, the vision Mark, of- you have oh, something to say on that? Yeah. Because- it would be interesting for me. I'm waiting uh, for that. Oh. Yeah. Mark, well, kasi kasi Isco Moreno, uh, pa, uh, kasi, uh, because- uh, what happened to Action? Uh, diba, after Raul Rocco died, it- for many uh, years uh, it was uh, parang a very small party tapos Vico Soto joined mm, right so that parang set the direction for the party in the new mm-hmm. decade and then when Isko joined syempre Isko is uh, different eh. parang iba yung iba yung klase nung politics na dala ni Isko pero i can see that uh, the people who are there sa action like si Ernest Ramel and si right. Leon Flores and uh, even yung anak ni uh, former Senator Rocco, they, they, they have a say eh, dun, sa, dun sa how Isco does his politics. And of right. course, now that the party is growing, syempre, they have even yeah. more say dun sa party. So I, I guess right. uh, that's nice. So, then, uh, so Mark, uh, I have a question for you. Let's say Manalo si Isco, is it going to be like yung ginawa ni Duterte sa PDP Laban, which is just he like just completely stomped all, all over it and then molded it to his image and then kicked out the Pimentels. Like, you think Isco yeah. would it has the capacity to run roughshod over a kind of legacy party the way Duterte did with hijack and purge hijack and purge yung ganun style yeah. kasi hindi naman hindi naman ganun nalalayo i think eh i mean hindi, hindi naman yeah. ganun siya sobrang kalayo in uh, to begin with para ganun yung mangyari and so i i, I don't think naman na right. ganyan na ano na i mean and, uh, si, ito mark uh, please feel free to correct me on this i mean uh, yung Kasi whenever Isko or people like Isko say, oh, likuan niyo, likuan niyo mo. I said, nako, napaka-Duterte na naman yan. But what got my attention is yung focus ni uh, Isko on affordable housing. So may mga position siya na almost socialist, right? Socialized housing. Kasi malaking healthcare. issue sa kanya yan. Kasi parating niya sinasabi, oh, healthcare, housing. Kasi yung issue sa kanya is yung dignidad ng tao. Because he was... He's he's a legit guy from you know he legitimately came from the poorest of the poor right so he understand poverty in ways that none of these other populists do I mean FPJ Arab Duterte mga ano yan eh, privileged background lahat yan eh. so one of the things I get with Isko is that he has this visceral understanding of poverty and therefore he believes in a much more radical vision of of changing facts on the ground so wag tayong magdebate dito sa ideological level pero dito sa the, on the ground let's just practical. give the basics no mm-hmm. malinis may bahay my 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 healthcare etc if, if i mean Lelo, if i'm going to do comparative politics may pagka tax in chino what din siya ng thailand you know, just go to the basics and provide may pagka ganun yung populismo niya no uh, sorry in the political scientists we always do this comparative mm-hmm. to make sense out of this pero hindi nang sense na ako ako sa kanya and i don't think hindi na appreciate enough Nang some of the liberal left people, no, I mean, uh, you know, a lot of them just look at him in terms of his unorthodox uh, rhetoric, or yung minsan parang inaaway away lang niya yung mga tao on, on on the record among others. But they're not paying attention to the more radical or so, social democratic side of him, especially don't housing issue. I mean, you, you tell me, Mark, am I getting him right on this point? I know yeah, he's not articulating he, 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 eh. he needs to yeah. uh, focus more on. Uh, getting out that message nga na yung kanyang mga social projects housing sa healthcare para yung issue kay right. Samira eh why she jumped over to Isko di ba na yes it, it we don't almost... need an ideologue i think that was the term oh, she used eh. no we we need we need a doer someone who can execute and implement the basics no yeah yeah well, well, so, ako na ako na ninyo at, at yung, mm-hmm. yung ideology rin kasi parang wala namang ideology talaga sa Pilipinas and anyone like parang even even the even stalwarts of the liberal party Ultimately, yeah. ang message nila is kalinga, malasakit. Lahat yan naman yung laro sa oh, Pilipinas. Yeah. Eh. You, you, I, I have a question for uh, Leloy lang din. I'm sorry, sorry. 
Oh, yung sa uh, for the last uh, five years during the Duterte administration, kasi yung kay Lenny and kay Isko, magandang ano eh, i-compare yung kanilang difference nung naging style and strategy to get to where they are now. So uh, hmm. si Lenny kasi has more like parang opposing talaga as in really hard, EJK. Positional, yeah. Yeah, positional. Si Isko has been more of uh, parang... Uh, He's, he's more uh, working with critical the collaboration. Critical Yon. collaboration. Yon, Parang the, 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 he, he rarely criticizes Duterte. Right, right. Pero he just works and works doon sa kanyang uh, city. At ngayon malapit na yung election, that's when uh, he starts to get more critical na. So what do you think about those two strategies? Lalo na we, we saw yung strength ni Duterte. And mm, mm. ano sa tingin mo? Well, spec- well, kasi spectrum yan, di ba? It's not as if Lenny is just banat lang ng banat din. So parang meron kang, meron kang sabihin natin dito, nandito si Bato, <laughs> nandito si Isko, di ba? Right. Andito si Gordon, di ba? Nag-defend. Yeah. Uh, andito si Lenny. Tapos andito si Delima, di ba? Parang may, <laughs> may, may levels. May, may, may levels din. So I think yung style ni Lenny was, In certain crucial points, keep your head down para hindi mapugutan ng ulo like Dilima. But at cert, but but yeah. always signal that you are against the big issues like yung EJK. Sa akin kasi yung EJK is, the, is still the most important issue. Now, I know that in surveys, that's not the most important issue, di ba? Sa surveys, econo- got, got economic issues yeah. na pinaka-important. Even education, um, I think, rank higher at some point. Yeah, education yeah. rank higher. Except for ABC. Except for oh, ABC. Yeah, yeah. Yung ABC lang, top three issue nila, almost consistently throughout oh. the first years of Duterte, yung law and order. But not yeah. yung karamihan ng Pilipino. Not the 80%. Not the 90%. For me, that that is the electoral issue kasi that is yeah. the moral that is the moral dilemma of the Philippines. Eh, diba? so, uh, um, it's, it's a, we're really in a, a moral crisis. And I think yeah. people don't like using the word morality. But I think if you have an electorate that says na Uh, that acknowledges that they're EJK and then still supports the government that does that EJK. Mm. Something like 60% of the electorate thinks that may EJK. Mm. And then at one certain point, 90% the ano, Duterte. Then you have people, then, then the data is clear. You have people who think that EJK is okay. And I think that's a moral problem. And I mm. think uh, too often you can cow... Uh, it's easy to cow critics by saying, so sinasabi mo ba, bobotante yan, ha? I- I- inaaway mo ba yung masang Pilipino, ganyan? Hindi ko sinasabing bobo sila, hindi ko rin sila inaaway. But I think it needs to be said quite yeah. clearly yes. na may moral lacking yan kung ganyan yung nakikita nila. If they're willing yeah. to vote someone na alam din ang pumapatay, right? We need to have a national moral conversation as a result. Right. Uh, Lele, because I want to go back to this, this is very important issue. Uh, there's first... The issue of fear factor. Mm. Uh, I have raised this. Some of our friends were not happy with me raising this uh. because to a certain degree, the fear factor may affect how survey results are, are uh, you know, come out. I mean, mm. for instance, what is your uh, what is your incentive to be honest about not liking Duterte when most of the surveys conducted in the very communities where you have a lot of EJKs and a lot of ayuda is needed? I mean, I, I'm just basing this on my experience of how surveys are analyzed in places like Russia, right, or China, right? Like, like Putin has 90% approval rating, yeah. but Sino, who wants to say I don't like Putin in Russia unless you're Alexei Navalny or something like that, right? Well, uh, so, so the fear factor is one thing. The other thing is it's a fatigue. Many Filipinos are saying, it's a one, it's a dos. Ano ba? Tama na yan. We have done already our mobilization. Let's just go with the flow. Let's just go with the flow. Yan ang, yan ang, yan ang naririnig ko over and over again. We, tama na yung protest and all. Walang mangyayari dyan. What is your take as a historian? I have my own take on this, but I want to uh, hear your take as a historian. Richard, Richard, so... Well, number one, sa- sabi nga ng Policy Asia, di ba? Kasi, uh, uh, may, may field workers who checked yung fear factor. Now, of course, that's an, incom- that's in- uh, that's an incomplete methodology, right? Uh, yeah, uh, may field workers uh, tinitignan nila yung reaction ng mga tao during the survey. Right. And wala daw sa yeah, yeah. That's one data point. The other data point is mas mataas yung rejection rate ng surveys nung panahon ni Noy Noy, di ba? So kung takot ka talaga, ayaw mo man sumagot eh, di ba? Hmm. Or actually, you could interpret it in a different way. Um, I know, exactly. Na parang, right. could, yeah. na parang uh, kung takot ka, sasagot ka, at sasabihin mo na gusto yeah. mo sa Duterte. Because otherwise, sa- pakik ko, wala naman mangyari sa akin. Hindi uh, naman, di naman nakawain yan eh. Pero uh, just uh, play safe. Let's say, yeah, yeah I like uh, yeah, pwede, pwede, si Tatay pwede, the best. Pwede, yan. That's uh, the thing eh, you can qualitatively interrogate it either way eh. Pwede rin. Pero yeah. I, I mean, generally, I still trust the surveys because... Yeah. Uh, sorry, Lelo, to say this. I uh, absolutely trust... Okay, I get misunderstood in that. I, I don't want to, you know, give the wrong impression. I absolutely, 
I absolutely have 100% trust in the integrity of Paul Seisha mm-hmm. Estabilisan. I've told this to Ronnie, I've told this to uh, mga has among other things. I'm just saying there is a factor that, that yeah. unfortunately I cannot quantify. That's yeah. my problem. So yeah. I will stand with the survey results. The third is popular. It's just that kasi yeah. itong problema yeah. lelo yeah. 70% support the drug war, 90% say we don't want the drug suspect killed. I mean, like, how do you make sense out of that? Yeah, like, yeah. You know, of point. course, I can make a sense out of it. But so for me, it's not a straightforward support. So my way of understanding is that which goes to my second issue, it's a fatigue. Mm. Let the guy go through his six years, give him a chance to finish it. Even if you don't agree, he won eh. Give him the six yeah. years. Ano, mag-protest tayo, mag yes, tayo yeah, yeah, That's really, what I hear eh. That's why I always talaga. hear you know, talaga, I, I agree. I think we are going to, we have entered a phase wherein, regardless of who the president is, the president will be popular. Give him the six years. Nakita, yeah, mo, I mean, na kay, nakita mo na to kay Noy Noy. Eh. People yeah, were, 50, 60% in 2015. Mabagsak. Alam mo, even towards the end, when they were saying ayaw na ng mga tao sa Dilawan, yeah. he actually still had majority support. Yeah, 55%. Yeah, yeah 55% Noy Noy had majority support. So, I mean, hindi hindi lumalabas yung mga survey ni Duterte yun kasi Pulse Asia dahil trinotrol sila. Uh, yeah. Pulse Asia and SWS hindi naglalabas ng survey. But I wouldn't be surprised if closer to the election, makikita mo na talaga yung dip ng numbers si Duterte similar to the dip of numbers ni Noy. The dip siya actually. Uh, both uh, SWS and Pulse Asia released recently. Uh, uh, I think Duterte is down by 21 points from November last year. still high, uh, but the trajectory is not good. It, it's so looking does, a little bit like Pinoy. Like Richard, very Pinoy, good, then, yeah. what does that look like? That looks like Aquino. Exactly. So maybe like we, have just, yeah. we have just really entered the phase in Philippine politics where the f- president is popular for five years and then the election happens and then you see a double-digit dip People but then have majority support, right? Yeah. Because the president has always had tremendous signaling power in Philippine politics and for Absolutely. some reason, the Filipinos like their presidential system, right? Yeah. Uh, He's kind of like then. the king, right? Uh, Go, Mark. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kasi, of course, uh, you said nga, you're a uh, self-confessed uh, di- dilawan and, of course, a Lenny <laughs> supporter. Ne, pero, pero uh, what do you feel about the sudden rise of uh, Bongbong Marcos and the Marcoses? And for the last five years, yung parang shift. Kasi I, I didn't feel this before 2016. Eh. Like you said, parang there was a sense of parang invinc- uh, invis- uh, invincibility for the yellow brand and the people power brand na parang got turned upside down the last five years and now we're seeing the rise of Bongbong Marco. So what do you feel? What happened about all of that? And Yeah. yeah um, I, just add to Mark, I, said, parang I think the idea is that it's hard to understand the decline of liberalism without also understanding the other side of the coin, which is the rise of historical revisionism and the Marcosian interpretation of history. Yeah. No? Yeah. I think I think na well mabili, ma, magaling kasi uh, I remember nung nasa Shenda Lucita ako right. parang lumalabas na yung nagsimula yun yung Yellow Monkey Productions I don't know if you remember that this came out mga parang 2010 yung YouTube I think this was the first social media mm. push of the Marcos family Marcoses. never associated with the Marcoses but you know I really thought it was a, it was a Marcos project kasi yung binibira ng binibira yung Shenda Lucita interesting uh, so 2010 pala nakikita mo check then, natin yan and then, thanks, at, thanks, Leloy, for that. Uh, oh, ikaw, and, YouTuber ka, Mark. Check link natin yan. Uh, oh, nandiyan pa. Pero, uh, and, then, and then, ratchet up ng ratchet up ng ratchet up. So, so, so sinakyan din nila. Uh, and, then, and then, the other factor there is, apart from the slow drip drip, is I think Filipinos really just want to become rich. <laughs> I think they really just want to become rich. So the glamour of mga Marcos is regardless where the money appeal, came from, appeal. makes them appealing. May oh, the glamour. The glamour. Yeah. And then they just want to be rich. And then the yung, promise of mga Marcos is, is, you know, kasi hoda na everything else, yayaman yeah. tayo under the Marcoses, right? And that I think that's that's really appealing, you know? <laughs> especially especially when you have somebody like Noy who's saying, kung walang korap, walang mahirap. Parang, yeah. Hindi. For some Filipinos, yumaman muna tayo, then let's take care of everything. Yeah, the rest. Yeah. And actually, you know, there's validity to that. So, see, si Ha Jun Chang, for example. Yeah. Um, the, my, one of my favorite... The Korean economists. economists yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Korean economist from Cambridge. He makes the argument that actually, baliktad, hindi walang korap, walang mahirap. Rather, pag mayaman na yung bansa, nawawala yung, mam, right. yung, yung corruption. Right. right? Because right. it takes money to solve corruption. You know? Yeah. And and how social you mobilization and awareness. You pay them right. a lot. How do you pay yeah. them a lot? You become rich, right? And then and then you raise this. You also, if you are a rich country, you raise the stakes of everything so that everything yeah. becomes visible. Because every project is multi-million dollar, right? So 
Mm-hmm. So everybody pays attention to it, right? So so things like that. Um, so I mean, favorite example ko yung kay Hajun Chang. Eh. Sabi niya sa yeah. anak niya, um, in the 1950s, we had a thing called Korean time. And you know what Korean time meant? It meant exactly what Filipino time means now. Yeah. Which means everyone's late. And then right. suddenly, yumaman yung mga tao. And then he, in his son's generation, they had not, they haven't heard of Korean time yeah. because everyone's rich and then everyone's rich. The stakes are so high, you can't afford to be late, yeah. right? So It's expensive to lose oh, time because time is money, yeah. So we have this idea that the Philippines is essentially cursed, right? Na parang mm. cursed tayo to be corrupt forever. Ganyan, we live in a changes land. We live in an anarchy of families. Ano ba cliche? We, we, we live in an anarchy of families. We live in booty capitalism. We live in a kasika democracy, right? That's the title of all the books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. exactly. It's the orientalist, uh, semi-orientalist portrayal. Philippines has, like, they're like stuck with corruption. But, oh. but in fact, there is a solution to that through institutional innovation among other things which Get goes rich. back to the issue is so kasi, uh-huh. ganito kasi Leloy, like the, the duterte approach is ubosin no i mean that's yeah. how we solve problems right the dilawan approach is gradual reform we will get there eventually right the marcos approach is you know <laughs> as you said <laughs> just get rich and life will follow right Mahalana, how with the money came right and then the ISCA approach is let's take care of the basics muna mamaya oh. tayo mag ideological debate so, I, I'm just looking at the different versions of this debate because eh? we all agree we have some problem but we do not agree on how to approach this problem or should we even just deny the existence of these problems and focus on individual success the best way to solve our problems is still growth why? because Okay, in, in Western countries, yes, they talk about things like post, post-growth. They talk about things like, uh, the, the, in, they talk more about climate change and the environment. Those are right. all important things. But they got there because of years of growth beforehand. I, think, I don't think the Philippines has gone through that. <laughs> Yung post-materialist values and social so, movements. So in maybe, Canada, yeah. And I know there's a problem with trickle-down economics, right? The idea right. that if people, if, that if the entire boat becomes, uh, that if you raise the entire boat, everyone becomes wealth. But also, uh, you need a big pie to distribute, right? Um, yeah. You so you need a state. Uh, you need a strong state to do the distributionary aspect yeah, of the policies yeah. and so, all of So that. You, need, you do need to raise the entire boat and then distribute afterwards. And I don't think we've raised the entire boat yet. So what yeah. we need is really is uh, really ra- rapid rapid growth. Um, yeah. And I do still think that there is a room for industrial policy in the 21st century. Yeah. I think that the government should still focus on businesses that it thinks can win right. um, internationally. Like, uh, you know, uh, culturally lang eh, why is BTS so famous? Because it's a product yeah. of, of, the, of the Korean developmental state because they ch- yeah. they picked a winner. It's supported by the state. Yeah. Cinema in Korea is supported na by the state. Na Squid Game. Na Squid oh, Game yung, mga, <laughs> yung oh. best version, yung BTS na ikita oh. natin. But it was like, It was a killer process. I mean, you don't want to be a dancer, actor in Korea. Oh my! Like, I think Snoop Dogg once did a kind of a joint show with the Koreans. Oh. He, he hated it. He yeah. said they made us work 18 hours, man. I only work 18 minutes a day. Like it's like Snoop Dogg, Snoop Lion. Like he was so pissed off and all of that. But going back, I mean, but, but, so, actually, pwede yeah. ko sa Marcos. So yes, yeah. exactly. Because Marcos oh. talaga issue. Like, so bakit ang lakas na Marcos? May, may, connection, may connection to dun sa Marcos. Yeah. So, yung problema natin is because yung ganong klaseng developmental interventions that you, developmental state is essentially you pick winners, right? Has yes. been associated with the Marcos brand. And right. when the Marcos has pick winners, they don't pick winners based on yung capacity nila to grow yes. the economy. They pick winners based on yung closest sila kay Imelda, yung closest right. sila kay Papo, yeah. ganyan. So there's nothing wrong with the model per se, right? It, is right. The, it was the execution of the model. Right. Um, so sabi nga ng, mentor, ng isa sa mga mentor ko, si Caroline Howe, in the Philippines, uh, when, when state intervention, when picking winners works, you call it mm. de- de- developmental state. When it doesn't work, what do you call it? You call it crony capitalism and you say it's right. Right? Right. right. So uh, in the case of Marcos, hindi siya gumana, nag-collapse right. siya. Right. Uh, the economy's term for that is reciprocal yeah. mechanism because in Korea, if you look at the chables today, Hyundai, LG and all, they used to be also oligarchs just like ours. Oh, you know, a bunch you- of hacenderos, walang pake... But Park Chung-hee, their dictator, could terminus of Marcos. Dito, Mark, di ba? Yan ang sinasabi ko eh. If Marcos was competent, he would have pulled off what Park Chung-hee uh, he was able to pull off in Korea. He picked the most effective versions of them. And what was that? Kung sino pwede mag-export and meet certain standards 
of yeah. industrialization. That didn't happen under Marcos. Like, mm-hmm. kahit anong kapalpakan nila, Coanco or uh, Benedict or what. I was like, these guys will still get the money. And at some point, so, sobrang corrupt ng system. It was leaking right and left and all of that. And then nung nagkasakit si Marcos, we don't know what's happening here. Yeah. But but going, but we are discussing Marcos the father. Why is Marcos the son also very popular? Diba sabi na sins of the father is not the sins of the sons. Why is he getting the achievement of the uh, father? Yeah. Why is he getting... <laughs> You know, How I does think, that work? And and this time and this time we should I think turn a little bit to like uh, cultural politics. I think a lot of it is really just machismo. I think you have a lot of parang mm. parang siga people who peaked in high school na laos sa sila ngayon. Tapos gusto nila magalboroto para ma, para asarin yung mga nanay nila, yung mga babae at yung mga nerds sa pamilya na sa sabi nila Marcos ako pare. So yeah. it's it's a way of signaling na tigas na tigas ka, de ba? Yeah. But actually. Ang lumalabas. Tsaka Matito Fortuner. Matito Fortuner. Matito Fortuner. Tsaka yung, yung idea of dis- disagreeability. So parang there's this yeah. entire genre Siga. on the internet of what I call Tito historiography. Yung format <laughs> yan is sinabi ng mga dilawan ganito. Hindi nyo lang yeah. alam. Yamashita's goal talaga si Marcos. Yeah. Diba? Tapos yeah. he just... Voltes 5. Uh, oh, Voltes 5. <laughs> uh, sabi mo lang the most Siga way possible. Yeah. At sabi mo na tanga lahat yeah. ng tao na ikaw yun ikaw lang yung nakakaintindi ganyan. Tapos lahat ng mga siga na gustong gayahin yun, nag yun gusto nilang image. Para yun yung sinusundan nila. Yun yung appeal right. ng So, yun so kung may virtue uh, signaling it, yung left, kung may yung left may virtue signal, ito siga signaling oh, sa may, right. Kumaga ganoon. Late strong man ano pa rin. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Pero ako yung ako kasi ako yung tipong parang ano eh, I I I own my nerdiness eh, you know, like kung may gumulpi sa akin ang solusyon ko doon tatakbo ko, 'di ba? Parang <laughs> okay na sa akin 'yon. Na ta- yeah, yeah. Kaya ako, yeah, kaya ako nag-work out. Kaya ako nag-work out hindi para maka para hindi not, not to punch back, but yeah, but yeah. so that I can run, you know. Like, yeah. <laughs> can run Mark, dapat din niya yung Instagram niya next level siya. So we have few minutes left. Uh, what do you want to do? You want to add a little bit time or you want to wrap it up? Because I uh, want to ask a last question on the ISCO tensions with Lenny. What do you think about that? And is there a fear that you'll repeat? Because I need to take your last point on ISCO versus Lenny. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, sorry. The ISCO Lenny tensions. I want to take your take uh, mm-hmm. uh, on that. No? Uh, so, Lelo, thank you dun sa ano mo. Kasi I remember, di ba may book ka na walang basagan ng trip? Basagan ng trip. Eh. Oh, basagan ng trip. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, basagan ng trip. Basagan ng trip. Na, 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 alam mo, Mark, dati sa 7-11 mo mahanap yan. Ganon ka-level yung level yun. Ganun, eh, di ba? May pagka-Lord de Vera yung ginawa niya. So, it's a cultural studies talaga. Uh, very interesting yung approach ni Leloy. Yung mga ito, mga Tito Fortuner, but I have to correct him, call them Tito Montero because I put you Fortuner ako. So, like, I felt bad. Like, Tito na pala ako. <laughs> Anyways, Tito Monteros. No? So, thank you, Leloy, for, for giving me those terminologies. Like, We have really covered a lot and hopefully we can have you in the future. We don't want to eat too much of your morning time. Grabe, Monday pa lang inubos na namin yung brain cells mo. <laughs> Sorry, ganun talaga kami. Mga addict kami. Talaga, ay, baka, mga... We mean junkies in politics. Just, just, just to be clear, delikado na sa Pilipinas tayo ngayon. Mahirap sabihin junkie eh. Political junkie, right? Just to be clear. Okay, so we kind of get bakit malakas ang Marcos. Is, I kind of get, I mean, I come from Baguio, so like, you don't even have to tell me anything. Like, for me, it's like, I've been telling you for some time, Bong Bong will run and he'll be number one contender. It's exactly happening. But let's go back to this because one thing that happened in 2015, 2016, this is where contingency matters. There was nothing predetermined with Duterte's victory. That's that's nonsense. The, the contingency, one of the big factor was nag-awa yung Poe and Mar. So mm-hmm. nag-split yung, yung votes. And oh. the fear today that a lot of people have is, as I, as I put it in a simple algorithmic way, Lenny versus Isco equals happy BBM, right? Um, is the, isn't this the threat? Because if you have followed what's happening on Twitter, which is very dominated by one side, right? Uh, the opposite of YouTube, which is dominated by pro Marcos people. Grabe talaga yung, yung attack kay Isco. Mm-hmm. Yung nilala- Isco is Duterte light. Isco is the secret candidate. Isco is Manchurian candidate. Grabe yung attack, bro. Mm-hmm. As in grabe. Even worse than the attack they had against Poe. They have been asking Isco to step down, etc. Samira Gotok was trending, not necessarily for the best reasons. They were, they were bashing her and attacking her. Uh, and I felt bad because you know, we, we stand with her. But, but of course, Isco also responded in a very magaspang way. It's go away. So, I mean, it didn't help. Grabe, tipong meron ka siyang comments na talagang Duterte 11 and all of that. Are you worried about this? I mean, this could get out of control because my argument is that, okay, karibal na kayo, but you shouldn't treat each other as enemies. That's yeah. different. 
mm-hmm. enemy mo yung kabila, di ba? I mean, if, if you want to speak in ideological terms, that's what Lenny said. She's here to make sure Marcos is don't win. Yeah. But this thing with Isco is getting out of control. Are you worried about that? Because you're you're kind of okay with both candidates. Although, yeah. of course, you like Lenny more. But you're okay with Isco. Doesn't yeah. this oh. kind of bother you? Well, hindi ako sure kasi kung they're splitting the same votes, di ba? And same with Po and uh, Mar. I, I wasn't also mm-hmm. sure if they were splitting the same votes kasi naalala ko second debate ba yun? Yung, nasa, yung si Duterte yes. at si Po. Um, right, right, on right. stage together tapos right. sinet up lang ng sinet up ni Po yung jokes ni Duterte and I think actually yeah. that contributed not to his win because he, kasi yung humor ni Duterte yeah. Yeah. Then, audience impact yeah. audience, audience impact boom yeah. si Po really yung funny. nag-trigger nun eh di ba kasi naalala mo si, si Po para oh mayor anong tingin mo dito anong oh, tingin mo yeah, dito yeah, yeah, I know. Dito. mina mother niya eh yeah she does mina that eh. niya. She, so she I think that, Grace yeah. Po actually yeah. uh, contributed a lot to the win of yeah. Duterte she was the stage right? mother for oh, Duterte ginamit niya yung showbiz interviewing chops yeah. Uh, yeah. to facilitate what was essentially a stand-up comedy routine yes. on the part at the expense of, of Bina and Mar oh, at the especially Bina but also Mar I, mm. honestly I think Bina would have done very well if he didn't just attend the debates as in he just boycotted mm-hmm. it because he was number one in Pulse Asia I think by la- late January oh, okay. so like Bina was back he was back So learn your lessons. Baka you don't want to join debates kung ikaw ang ani. Kasi talagang ginang up siya, uh-huh. eh, no? Kawawa siya. Tapos mamaya, oh, Mar, mm-hmm. mag-iihi ka na dyan. Sorry, uh-huh. I, I use the Ilocano term is po. Mag-iihi ka na dyan. Diba? Like, uh-huh. you know, and, but, but he never attacked Poe that much, no? Uh-huh. Uh, Duterte, no? So that, that, you're, that's a very good observation. So, what, but, so, so yung observation ko then is, what, was it possible na ang reading ng some of the Poe voters doon is essentially Grace is saying na magkakampi kami kay Dig- ni Digo? Mm-hmm. It's right. okay for Secret you to alliance vote for, to vote for Digong because if I'm setting him up in such a way that I make him look like the most charming person in the world, right? right. So same thing with uh, with Isko. Isko. I think there's a section yeah. of electorate na gusto si Isko na closer to Duterte and there's a section of the electorate na gusto si Isko na closer to Lenny because I think Isko also trades on his masculinity. Di ba nabanggit ko kayo sa, sa kanina na yung uh, style ng Marcos? That tama, tama. Style of tama. alboroto masculinity. Correct, correct. What Isko is trying to do is he's trying to signal masculinity without having to go through an alboroto. Right? Hindi right. Siya, he's not acting out. He's trying to signal a, an older kind of Filipino masculinity, a kind of right. quiet masculinity. Traditional. Maginoo, yeah. maginoo old manilenyo masculinity. Right? That right. brand, right? And, right? and Arab tried to do that also. But I think Isko is doing it a lot more successfully. Um, yeah. So I so I'm uh, I'm not entirely I'm not entirely sure how to answer that question. I yeah. don't know what the what the breakdown is like. Yeah. Saan, sino yung second choice ng Isko mm. voters, sino mm. yung second choice ng Lenny voters. Mark, you have some some uh, ideas on that because you, you may have seen some of the data's on head to head and all. Because from what I saw in Pulse Asia, this is it. Interestingly, Lenny is very weak among ABC, but stronger among E. Poorest of poor Filipinos. Uh, sila ni Pacquiao, no? So actually, there's some overlap with Pacquiao in terms of strengths and weaknesses. And then mahina sa NCR si Lenny. Ang lakas ni uh, Isko sa, sa ABC, I think after... Uh, so sa NCR, mal- pinakamalakas I think is Bong Bong, and ABC, and then it's Isko. So uh, in an interesting way, it, it doesn't seem na masyado nag-overlap yung kanilang uh, supporters. But I don't know. I'm looking at the uh, very In fact, I sometimes even say na baka nga if mag-withdraw si Isko, baka mas lumaki pa yung lamang ni, ni Bongbong. Kasi... Yes, because Bongbong is number one tied with Poe as the second most preferred. So Poe is no longer in the game. Bongbong is there in a good position to pick up a lot of numbers. And my sense is Isko ah, okay, will pick up numbers from even Sara if Sara doesn't run. That's my yeah. sense too. So it, it's so I think because there are a lot of people thinking that by destroying Isko, I mean on the other side, baka yung ABC vote or NCR ay pupunta kay Lenny. Mm-hmm. But... Actually, what could happen? This could go to Bombo Marcos. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, they're not Make seeing that. They're not seeing the data. Right? Because they're looking on Twitter at eh, lahat middle class. So, malamang, pag sinira nyo si Isko, baka yung number pupunta kay Lenny. But it doesn't work that way. The ABC might even go more to Bombo or oh. Sara, right? So, I think people are not looking at the data. This is my worry. Like, This is even worse than potentially hindi, hindi the Bombo. Hindi mo rin alam kasi, ba, a lot of people, in fact, welcome the candidacy of Rodrigo Duterte, di ba? Ay, kasi it's going to take votes away from B9, di ba? Yan, yan, yeah, yeah, may, may ganun pa. So, Cynic, so yung cynical yung voting. Yung, yeah. like, ano, who's taking away votes from whom? It's yeah. so unpredictable because nga, it's, a, it's yes. just a plurality. Ang hirap ng numbers because right, you don't right. need a lot to win in a plurality. Yeah. So, yes. uh, the slightest adjustment here and there could spell the difference between somebody exactly. winning. Exactly. Few points. Not. Yeah. Oh. Right. 
Kaya nga sabi ko kay market, dapat net positive ang tinitignan nyo. Because you might lose some points here, but if you can over, you can compensate more than enough in other areas, then so be it. Hindi lang yung, ay, wala tayong points dito. May maka- so you have to look at the net uh, net positive also gains there. No? But, okay, Mark, you had a question by yeah, yeah. kay Lelo? Kasi, kasi point? nga, uh, I've been talking with this do sa mga friends ko from the Lenny side. And uh, pa- parang, never before in our history since people power nag ganito mm. kadami yung mga tao na against people power i think ah, na ganun i mean nabalitad nung mga marcos in the last five years yung yung uh, narrative about uh, the aquinos mm-hmm. and ninoy and so uh, tingin mo anong Baka Mark, what, that's because you're a youtuber i mean i, I maybe you, are, you have a selection bias yeah, pero, pero that explains also diba? the rise of bongbong marcos eh If you go, I, I was telling this to Samira kanina, if you look at Bam Aquino's uh, Facebook page, yung kanyang martial law right. post, it had 400,000 haha reacts. Mm. 400,000 Pinoy slapping. Hindi kaya bot at, yan? Hindi kaya bot yan? Or, uh, hindi, marami. Talagang totoo. Hindi, genuine, a, yeah. a small percentage is probably bots, but Uh, marami doon ko rin Facebook eh. eh dapat tatanggalin nila yung laugh laugh emoji yeah, eh. yeah, yeah. So, de, pero, parang what, pang troll talaga yun eh pang troll talaga what do you think is uh, what do you think can the uh, people uh, who are pro people power ka, can do to uh, mm. parang to counter this trend or to oh uh, Lele in, in short how can the yeah, liberals okay. save liberalism I mean I think, how, I think, how to I, make it cool and sexy yeah. I think I think one thing yung to to beat yung Marcos is is fairness is to give credit where credit is due kasi mm. the problem with my camp is that anything that Marcos did is masama so and right. and napaka pernicious nung effect di ba okay si Marcos nang utang ng maraming pera So for many liberals, masama ang utang as a result kasi yun yung ginawa ni Marcos, di ba? Right, right. And what if you are in a situation like we are now when people are starving at kailangan mo mangutang para magkaroon right. ng ayuda? Right. Mangutang ka talaga. I mean, kahit nanay, pag gutom na gutom na yung anak niya, wala nang pakialam yan sa babayaran niya five years down the road. Mangutang na mangutang niya, pakainin niya yung anak niya, di ba? Kasi gutom na. Eh, yun nangyayari sa Pilipinas ngayon. Uh, so so yung, yung the idea of debt as toxic and because it was Marcos, Is, right. is something uh, one of my favorite characters was si ano, uh, Salvador uh, Salvador Araneta I, re- I write about him in my right. book in the mid 70s after the pe- as, after Marcos depreciated the peso Araneta anti Marcos siya in exile siya ni Marcos ganun siya ka anti Marcos na na exile siya ni Marcos I think he was here in the Bay Area and he said something like this Marcos uh, is my enemy but what he's but but when he depreciated the peso I think My he body. did something really yeah. brave. Right. You know? So yeah. I think that's a kind of model of fairness. Like you can say, okay, he's my yeah. enemy, but he did something really brave. Yeah. Give, cr- once... give credit where credit is due. Oh. But Lele, just to be clear, our concern here is obvious debt. So it's not just any debt. It's od- the same way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Efficient corruption, right? And yeah, that yeah. corruption is a China, but it creates growth. Iba yun sa corruption as a Swiss account yung pera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's But be very it... clear about this. We're not against debt per se, but obvious debt, which yeah, is yeah, what yeah. we saw under Marcos. Just yung... to be fair, To, to your uh, side. <laughs> at saka yung, so, 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 I mean, the best example there is 1980. Diba? Sa so 1980, nag, nagsimula yung collapse ng Philippine economy. Mm-hmm. And if you read the stuff I wrote right. five years ago, ten years ago, if you read the stuff that a lot of anti-Marcos people write, the, the narrative is simple. Marcos borrowed a lot of money. Yeah. Tayo sa utang, we went through ten years of crisis. Because he was borrowing more, was, mm-hmm. but, but, what, what, was because the interest rates changed overnight right. because in 19- thanks to US Paul yeah. Volker, thanks to Volcker shock Volcker shock and then oh. Reagan later on yeah. and He, then, not to mention 70s we also have sorry I'm, because I want to also show oh. I'm fair right because oh. there are some people who might say mega lang to sa mga oh. ka Ilocano ko di ba oh. mga sama ni Ilocano there was also the oil shock of oh. the ni- mid 1970s oh. that undermined the moment. so see we are being yeah. fair here hindi kami mga haters bashers oh. here We're Saka looking at the data. Yeah. Interesting yung oil shock ha? because we actually posted growth during the years of the oil shock. And that's, uh, but it lost 19... momentum na by yeah, yeah. Uh, late 1970s. Uh, yeah, but I, I think in 73 was a growth year for us. Yes. And that's, 10%, I think, I think our growth natin is like 10%. Marcos depreciated the peso. And when you depreciate right. the peso, you're, you're upping, you're upping exports. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, and also, you know, the last time there was a systematic 
systematic de depreciation of the peso prior to Marcus's depreciation of the peso in 1970 was in the late 19th century. And that triggered mm -hmm. uh, an export boom that effectively yeah. financed Rizal's education. So ganun ka, right. ganun ka monumental yung depreciation of the peso yeah. in 1970. It's one of the most important events in Philippine economic history for me because not in a hundred years had something similar been done. Yung makapagal adjustment, maliit lang yun eh. Dinefend mm. pa rin yung na yun. Um, so anyway, going back to 1980, right, uh, it wasn't just the Philippines that underwent crisis. In, in, in the Latin American region, you call the 80s La Decada Perdida, the lost decade, right? right? right. Indonesia went through something similar. In fact, the United States went through Japan something. too. Japan, Japan too, the lost through. decades. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh. Yeah. Ito na yung, ito na yung beginning ito na yung beginning ng de deflationary deflationary right. spiral ng Japan which would which dogs them until today really so yeah. so i mean to think of 1980 as a marcos crisis as opposed to an international mm. debt crisis it's just mm. for me really irresponsible on the part on my part and i apologize because i Or is it bad economic analysis it's just bad it, economic it's analysis bad economic right? analysis now how yeah. how do you analyze this that's fair i think the 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 best an analysis to this is there was a global debt crisis everybody went under the philippines could have recovered more quickly if marcos yeah. didn't use the uh the the aid money to help his cronies right if he didn't use right. the stimulus money to help his cronies if he indeed if he used the stimulus money and the debt mm. to grow other parts of the economy and to contribute directly to the aid of the people then we could have exited the crisis mm. more quickly Right. Uh, not to mention Lelo, the no, argument it, would be also this. didn't assassinate Aquino. That's the other thing, right? I mean, the argument would also be this. I mean, Korea also went through that. Taiwan also went through that. How come they didn't come off as bad? Because by 1970s already, they were laying down the foundation of robust industries. Yeah. So yeah. We, we lost the chance in the 70s to prepare ourselves mm -hmm. for, for the potential debt crisis. Uh, so by the time it hit, but of course, another excuse you can make, Marcus got sick. He was not really fully in charge. Mm -hmm. But another excuse you can make for Marcus, the Philippines had weaker state institutions that you know Park Chung-hee had. He had stronger yeah. state institutions yeah. that allowed mm -hmm. him to discipline the elite. We can go on forever. What, what we're trying here is, is just to show that we, we have to be fair. We have mm -hmm. to give credit where credit is due. So that's one good thing. What else should the liberals in Philippines do to make themselves more palatable to growing number of Filipinos? Because obviously, the mythology or whatever it is, hindi na siya as, as, as much as before. And Mark has been pointing that out. So social media, kitang kita na yan eh. That's why ako, you know how I criticize Marcos? I side Lee Kuan Yew. So oh, I, yeah. I use their own against their own, right? Yeah. Because Lee Kuan Yew was bashing Marcos. So I'm not going to cite some Democrat. I'm going to cite Lee Kuan Yew yeah. because Lee Kuan Yew was pissed off with the Marcos. It's like mad. Yeah. I mean, he was ashamed of the dictators. Like, pinapayamo yeah. kami pare kami efficient kami dictator. You're giving us a bad name, right? So, see, that's my style. I completely reinvent it. Like, I'm not going to go to, I'm just going to cite Lee Kuan Yew and boom. That's that's one of my best doing posts. Like, I think 30,000 shares and likes. Yeah. You know? like, yeah. like, I, I see that's how it works. Eh? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I mean that's right, and I think the underlying why that's that's effective is you're talking about wealth, right? You're talking about mm. Thompson, right? So I think yes. the liberals should also talk about wealth. Pano tayo yayaman? Have a vision right. for that, right? Because that's the promise. Interesting. For me, that's the failed promise of the Marcoses. And pwede tayong yaman, you know, Bong Bong will always say something like, if my father stayed in office, we could have become the next Singapore. The appeal there is, is, is party authoritarianism, yes, but it's it's largely, I think, wealth. Wealth. So wealth. what's the vision? Yeah. What's the vision of the liberals mm. for wealth, right? I think like we should talk to... I, I think, you know, like uh, if I were, if I had the capacity to advise the Lani campaign, I'd say, you know, think about Korea. You know, Uso naman Korea ngayon. That's great. Korea is great branding, right? You have yeah, K-pop, okay. uh, you have yeah. K-pop, right? So so you you use that cuddly branding and yet signal that you have a vision for wealth, right? What's That's where vision? we want to get in. We want to be, because their president is the human rights, ex-human rights lawyer, just to uh, put things into perspective. That's how rich. far Korea has gone. Mm. They're rich. And they have human rights lawyers running for president, not one, yeah. even the mayor of Seoul. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, so Korea is a country of tremendous amount of success, but also trauma because mm -hmm. they had to compress what it took 200 years for England into like 40 years. And that's I'm why my squid talaga. game. Okay, my squid I'm game. Tayo, eh. Only getting... Koreans can do that. Uh, and you parasite and squid game. Oh, yeah. actually, in the 1950s, there was, a, there, was a, there was a memo from the World Bank that described Korea as a bottomless pit of corruption. Yep. As right. recently as it's, the 1950s, it, yes. you know? So what's your vision for wealth, guys? Right. How do we go to no, Korea? No. How do we get to Korea? Uh -huh. We have to have some vision like that. Or Taiwan, for that matter. Mm -hmm. Another very... I think uh, Rushir Sharma, one economist, said gold medal goes to South Korea among all countries in the world. Silver medal goes to Taiwan. Over the yeah, past 50 yeah. years, what they pulled off 
has not been matched by anyone else. But let's say with China, but China is not a democratic, so it's not it's not as attractive as Korea, perhaps, or Taiwan or something is. Uh, do you have some last point, uh, uh, Lele? Uh, Mark, by the way, you have some last point for Lele because I think you already have a grasp of. Uh, San Galing si Leloy at saka yung ano niya, yung pasaway din mag-isip yan eh. Uh, do, you, do you want to push him a little bit, put him in a bit more trouble among our YouTuber <laughs> friends? Hindi, <laughs> <laughs> yun, uh, wala. I'm, uh, natuwa ako doon sa mga sinabi nga niya and uh, I learned a lot from uh, mga different, uh, all the way back, Hacienda Losita and hanggang ngayong panahon. <laughs> and yeah, I, I, always, I always say, ano eh, to Richard na ano eh, uh, ang kulang then for the people na uh, who are against martial and all that is di right. sa YouTube eh. So maybe in, in, he should yes. consider then na uh, uh, his own channel maybe. Yes. Para, uh, there are more Magaling sources. Magaling yan. Nakita mo yung mga rappler ano niya, di ba? Uh-oh. Kasi, Pero Lelo, you, you, you have to ano, you have to sell your soul to a certain degree. YouTube is the next level. But yeah, you, you can turn off the comments naman. Right, you can do right. that sa YouTube. So, but we, we need more people like uh, like uh, him to uh, uh, show both sides. Jordan yeah. Peterson of the left, yeah. Because, yeah, the, yeah this is fair, eh, diba? He's showing the, the good and the bad side, diba? People power, yeah. but there's also Ashenda Lucita. And, the, and I think that's what we need for, for yes. uh, people who... Uh, for the, the younger generation to have a complete uh, understanding of what happened in the past. Right. Thanks, Mark, for that. And thank you so much, Leloy, for this very, uh-huh. very comprehensive and extensive discussion. I lost track of time. Okay. Midnight na dito yes, sa amin. And early morning, good morning to you. I hope hindi namin naubos yung kape sa katawan mo, but you're <laughs> free to get another one if you want. Uh, looking great, my friend. It's really yeah. great to see you, Leloy. And hopefully we can see you in person. And hopefully we can have you in the future in other kind of platforms and also our platform here. Lalong lalo na kasi elections ay uh, malapit na. We're really glad to have no less than Lisandro Cla- Claudio, historian at the University of California, Berkeley, as our first special guest. No? And we're going to have more. We're going to have Samira Gotok, among others, in the upcoming episode. So please, abangan nyo. And we're going to have more of these discussions. Walang trolling, walang bastusan, mabait po kami. Uh, mm-hmm. Please be nice also, right? But if you're not nice, sige, bahala kayo dyan. Mag-away tayo dyan sa Facebook, <laughs> among others. Thank you so much, Lelo. Do you have some yeah. final thoughts or comments or suggestions that you want to share with our very diverse yeah. diverse audience i think i think yung 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 sa atin ako sa yung pinagalingan ko ng debating so yes. debate, debating is about certainty and what i've realized you know 20 years away from that uh, <laughs> is that certainty is not important you have to show people your vulnerability you have to show your mm. them yung capacity mo to change your mind and you have to say when you've changed your mind um and when you were wrong and i hope mm. in this interview napakita ko sa inyo lahat ng mga pagkakataon where I was just dead wrong and right. some people were more right than me. And I think once we adopt that posture, um, thinking mm. when we were wrong, then people will listen to us a bit more and will will also help people change their minds a bit more. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Leloy. I mean, it's good to see you getting kinder as you get older. Because <laughs> Leloy... You don't want to be his friend back in the day, especially <laughs> if you're not from Atene, if, especially from UP. He had a certain reputation. And just to be honest, I didn't have the best reputation to another person. Leloy knows that very well. So, Mark, you're very lucky. You saw a mabayid version of I and Leloy. And to all of our friends and fans and haters, see mabayid kami, no? Uh, and please continue to support us. So, Project Pilipinas, our hope here is to bring people from all across the political spectrum. We will have controversial people in the future. Lelo is actually controversial, pero bumait na siya. So it's not as edgy as before. He's just a good scholar now. So that, that's good enough. We can work with that. Maraming salamat, Lelo. Have a great salamat, day Martin. there in, in, in the Bay, San Francisco. Hopefully everything's going fine with you. We can say your location, right? We're not going to give your address. Baka mamay matrol ka. Thank you very much. From Mark. Mark, nasa ka ba ngayon? Para niya ke? QC, QC. QC, ayan, mga ka QC from the city of stars, Quezon City. Maraming salamat. Thank you very much. There we go. Episode 14, Project Pilipinas. Yes.